prayer service at the earth, increasing faith deliverance ministry. We're here to bring you to the other level in the Lord. We hope that as you connect with us through faith, you will feel the anointing moving, lifting, raising you to another level. And that the connection will be genuine. I will produce fruit and much fruit and fruit that remains. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Come on, give him praise right now where right where you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for another day. Thank you for just the opportunity to know that we are here again. Hallelujah. To come together as your people. <laughs> to magnify your great and precious name. Hallelujah. The things that you have done for us are more than we can ever count or imagine. The fullness of it. Hallelujah. But you keep on doing good in our lives. Unveiling your glory and your power and your Holy Spirit within us us from strength to strength and from faith to faith and from glory to glory. Hallelujah. Cause our understanding to increase more and more. Hallelujah. In the knowledge of you. Hallelujah. And activating the promises that you have declared in our lives. We pray that our hearts will be in tune with you. Hallelujah. We will not miss a beat a word and instruction that you give. Hallelujah. And as it is in heaven, so will it be here in the earth. We bow before you, Father, and we honor you for all the mighty things that you have done. Breathe upon us afresh right now. Every thought, every imagination, every feeling, every view that exalt itself against you. We bring it into captivity and into obedience to you right now. Pray that your Holy Spirit will charge this atmosphere now with your presence and with your anointing. Destroy every yoke and lift every burden. Make this place conducive for what you're about to do in our lives and through our lives and around us. Hallelujah. We come to you, the author and the finisher of our faith. And we believe that you have already prepared and this day with benefits for us and by faith we desire to activate those things in our lives hallelujah for your divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness in Christ Jesus and you have blessed us with all spiritual blessing in heavenly places and we pray that as we walk by faith and not by sight they be realized in our life, they materialize in every area. Hallelujah. No stone will be left unturned. No, nothing will be left undone. Hallelujah. That you lead us as a great and mighty shepherd. Lead his flock. Hallelujah. Into green pastures by the still waters and restore our soul. Thank you for all these benefits. As we look to you, Lord, let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Hallelujah. Now we give you all the glory and all the praise. Let your anointing come upon us and your Holy Spirit impress on our hearts and our mind. Hallelujah. What to do, what to say, and how to accomplish this work called us to accomplish in Jesus name come on give him the praise and the glory right now hallelujah come on give him the praise wherever you are you got something to praise him for give him the praise right now hallelujah Whoa. glory to God hallelujah What an awesome God we serve. 
and I came to praise him. You come to praise him this morning. <laughs> come on, come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Lord, I live to name on high.
Come on, give him praise. <laughs> Woo, my God. Come on, you ready to give him some more praise in the house? All right, man. I see you ready. Come on. Give me that car. There is always somebody talking about But really I don't uh, They try to stop and block Most of the time But the main thing is saying Come on I got a friend I got a friend I got a Jesus All right When I'm hungry, I got Jesus. Woo! So in a time when nothing ever die, I tell nobody but my Lord, my Jesus, here's my plea. Here's my all in all when you push me down, Jesus. Come on, they came my enemies when they started getting robbed. And that's enough, oh Lord. Well, well, he saved me, keeps me, feeds me. Hungry, I got Jesus. Hey. Well, he saved me. Jesus, Woo! 
the name of Jesus. Come on, bless him all over this place. Hallelujah. There's no greater life than a life in Christ. Hallelujah. And we encourage everybody to get on board. Praise God. For the train will be coming, huh? And passing through. And I tell you, if you miss that flight, there's not another one. Hallelujah. You got to be ready for his coming. Praise God. And we rejoice in him and encourage those that are in him to stay in him. Keep on walking the walk of faith because believe me, the world won't congratulate you for it. The world will speak against you and will ridicule you and say all manner of evil against you for standing up for the truth. But believe me, it's only the truth that will set you free. Praise God. And there's no substitute for the truth. And that's where we find the true life in Christ. And he came that we might know the truth. And the truth would set us free. Praise God. And so those who receive him, you, you have one step up. Hallelujah. From those who have not, keep on pressing. Don't be, become stagnant and, and uh, become complacent in that position. But keep pressing on in the Lord and in faith. And you will see greater revelation of God's power and Holy Spirit in your life. That will bear fruit and testimony that you are indeed children of God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, I hope we have some testimonies here today. I know we got some, so we open the door. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> I was just meditating on the goodness of God and I remember you praise and worship, I felt the Lord wrapping me in his arms. And I was just meditating that and I said, boy, God, you love me, you know. And I know he loves everybody, but he just knows how to make me feel like I belong to him. And that I miss. And I just love that he expresses his love for me on a day-to-day -day basis. And that's why he says that when you are truly his child, he will rebuke you, he will correct you, he will perfect everything which concerns you yes and i remember when the apostle was teaching or preaching on sunday morning and he said those exact lines and was looking directly at me i knew it was me god was talking to and he said i'm going to perfect everything that concerns you and that's why you have to believe this perfect word this perfect teaching being perfect in christ because yes. i realize that a lot of persons they're saying that they're serving god but when I come to bring in this perfect testimony, that is where they start to have issues with. And even mm -hmm. if I show them the word that says, be blameless and upright, even mm -hmm. when God was boasting about Job, they would say, blameless does not mean perfect. So I showed <laughs> them King James Version that used the word perfect, and they couldn't say anything after that because the truth stands. It always stands, no matter what. Is that you're going to receive it or deny it? Is that you're going to walk in truth or you walk in lies? You have to make that choice. And I'm thankful that God has allowed me to be able to hear truth, receive truth, and allow truth to keep transforming me each and every day. Amen. Praise God. Come on, give him the praise one more time. You see, because when persons don't believe that they can be perfect in a sinful and corrupt and perverse world. They are not just doubting you. They are doubting the power of God. And the gospel is not about just God forgiving us and showing us mercy. Because it's not by mercy you are saved. You are saved by grace. It's about the power of God. That's why Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is what? The power of God is not the mercy of God, it's the power of God unto salvation to them that believe. It's the power of God you're doubting that you cannot live perfect in a sinful world. It's the power of God you're doubting. It's not you can't do it of yourself, but with God you already declare that all things are possible. So unless you are no longer with Him, then we know it's just not possible for you. You can try. But it will not be possible. But for those that are with him, hallelujah, with God, huh? all things are 
it is possible and it's not something we should just dream of but it's something we should live as Paul said to Timothy be an example of the believers hallelujah in every way conversation charity purity faith hallelujah he says in meekness in kindness be an example you don't have to look at others and say because they are failing I have to fail too you can rise above that and be the example for them that they can look to you and say yes we know that's the standard and we are going to walk together hand in hand with Jesus and we are going to overcome every hurdle the enemy sent our way. What you say? Praise God. And so that's what we want you to know. We want you to have that kind of faith that is not doubting what God can do through you and in you. That will not look on the issues of this world and say it's too much. I can't do that. It's not. It's too hard. Praise God. The devil is a liar. There is nothing too hard for God. And with God operating in you through his Holy Spirit, you are more than a conqueror. Praise God. The devil is a liar. You can live in this life and live this life in Christ without sinning. You don't have to serve the devil. You don't have to give in to your sinful flesh. You don't have to give in to the pressures of this sinful world. That's why you're called to be a follower of Christ. Hallelujah. And that follower of Christ cannot be following in sin. For Christ was tempted in all ways, yet without sin. Praise God. And he that was tempted in all ways is more than able to help you. To help those who are being tempted. Praise God. That's what the word of God says. So we wanted to rise up to the occasion and fulfill the calling of God on your life. And don't play lotto with your soul. Don't play lotto with your life in Christ. But be serious about it. It's not a game of chance. It's a surety. Make your election sure. Praise God. And we know you can do it. So we are not here doubting. We are here telling you, you can. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Come on, somebody. Any more testimonies in the place? Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, um, ever since the Lord gave me this word uh, about two weeks ago, Colossians 3, 1 to 4, set your minds on things above. The Lord knew that something was coming, and if my mind was not set on things above, I would have been frustrated, I would have been confused, and I would have been overwhelmed with the, with the pressures. But the Lord taught me that. And it's a, it's a it's a wonderful thing that, you know, is that God gives you a prelude to what is going to happen each day. Mm. Because every time I talk to God about something, I come here in the morning or in the afternoon and Apostle is teaching on it. Like, I do not understand. I, I <laughs> cannot understand how people say they're praying for years and, and they cannot hear from God. It baffles <laughs> me. Because I remember one morning, I heard that somebody was sick. And in my mind, we say, you know, Lord, sometimes some people have to get take out the world and other people survive. And I looked at it, I'm like, wonder, wonder if I devil have said that. And then I say, no man, I, I felt in my spirit that, you know, sometimes some people have to get take out of this world for other persons to survive. It's a person that has caused me some issues um, earlier in my life. And I know the devil was using that person. And I know the person was evil. And I was praying for them, like, God, heal them and, and whatever. And then I came and, and then Apostle was teaching. And Apostle said, sometimes the Lord will exchange people for you. Mm -hmm. You understand? He will exchange people for you. And I, I still pray for the person. The person is still, still around. I pray for the person. But it's like God gives you insight into his word. And when he yeah. gave me that word in Colossians, he said, set your minds on things above. And when I look at it, I saw that things around me started, you know, shifting and... Um, computer started, a laptop start malfunctioning, things start malfunctioning, and the Lord said, set your minds on things about. And I was asking the Lord, what is this about? And I remember the Lord said to me, Romans 8, 28, all things work together for good. He said that to me Sunday night, and when I came um, Monday morning, the apostle was giving 50 scriptures for the incorruptible 
50 incorruptible seed scriptures for the incorruptible life. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if a person noticed when he does it. Sometimes he doesn't know it. It's just God doing it. And if you ask him why he did it, he might ask the way I thought of so he, when, he, when he reached that scripture, he, he looked at me and he said, yeah, man, you better know that. All <laughs> things work together for good. And I said, okay, that's, that's for me. That's for me. That's what the Lord was saying to me last night. And there are several times it happens. Like he's teaching and I'm asking the Lord something. And then he just says it. And I, again, I don't know if he's noticing, but he looked for me and I'm say, okay, Lord, yes, that's the answer. So I don't understand how people say they prayed for years and not hearing from God. And this is, this is the confirmation that the Spirit of God lives in me and is bearing witness mm. because He's confirming His Word. And when we connect in the Spirit, everything flows. The Word of God flows. The Word is taught. You receive it and you understand it and then you bear fruit. If you lack understanding, there will be no fruit. And God always works things out. Everything might not be pleasant. But everything is working for our good. And this morning he said to me, um, what the devil meant for evil, God can turn it around for good. Mm -hmm. And that, that then he said to me, only somebody that has all authority and all power can do that. It doesn't matter what the devil is doing. It doesn't matter what he's doing. God can change things in a moment, in the blink of an eye. And that is what keeps me assured. That is what keeps me going. That, listen, God is working everything out. Everything is not pleasant. Everything is not in the right place or functioning the way you want it to. But God is using, he's shifting things and he's working it out for, for my good, for your good, and for his glory. And I give him thanks for that. Praise God. That's what the word of God says. Come on, give him praise. He's working to, not all things that happen in your life is good. And not all things that happen in your life is from God. But the word of God says, because you are, you love him. And you are the called according to his purpose. Then he says, he's working together. All things for your good. Come on. So it may not have been intended for your good. But when God gets through with it. Praise God. It will work out for your good. So some things we complain and fuss about and get upset about is just a setup for our breakthrough. God allowed the enemy just to do some things for us to see his power at bringing salvation in those things. Praise God. And so we, we that's why it says in everything, give thanks. This is the will of God for you that you give thanks in everything not for everything but in everything because you keep that thankful attitude then you are already reassuring yourself that God has a handle on it and it will work together for your good amen praise God any more testimony in the house we want to hear testimonies what the Lord has done praise God hallelujah Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everyone. I just want to give God thanks today that He is the God of the mountain and He is still God in the valley. And He knows my upsetting and my down, my down sitting. And He knows when I'm up, then He knows when I'm down. And He knows just what to do, how to fix things around. I'm just thanking God to be in this house at this time and this season because God has been so good to all of us in here. All of us, every one of us, to the bottom, God has been very so good. When I look at the young people out there glowing, growing and growing, how beautiful they are. I was saying to somebody the other day that um, we were discussing and she was saying that the young people, them don't want you to know God, they don't want to God. And I was saying to her, not all of them, because <laughs> in where I go, majority of the other people there are young people. And I'm so glad to be around them because they help to make you feel um, rejuvenated and re-energized. Because when you see them jumping up and down, you're not going to stand up so like you're bored. Like in a Hannah life. You're going to want to do what they're do. You're going to want to have skip on the back. After all, you're going to sit down and drink a cup of water. Well, fine. But you're going to want to do what they're do and, and feel, you know, let them know that what they are doing, they're on the right track. I just want to give God thanks for the covering that we are under. 
and for all of that because there are so many when you just stand at one place at a point anywhere you want to in Montego Bay or wherever it is, and just watch just look at the different people or pass at a different situation and you will realize that you have a lot to give God thanks for you have a lot because some persons are out there thinking that everything is all right but when you look at yourself they may have host land and care and whatever it is when you look at yourself and what God remember where God brought you from and where you are now it is a lot to give God thanks for because the word of God says that the goodness of God it really should lead man to repentance but not everybody some of them to give them alone why them get the goodness you know or family line or whatever they don't realize that it's God that is being so good and I'm just saying that if the goodness of God to lead man to repentance, lead man to repentance, then the goodness of God in the house lead us to praise, lead us to worship, lead us to thanks, no matter what we are feeling in the flesh, no matter how things look, we just have to give God thanks. Make up song, do something, make up a praise, remember something, and give God thanks. That's retaining him in your knowledge. This is a good thing, some of the things that we take for granted you realize that no, it's a good thing. When I use a bathroom and a bread, we may have to give God thanks. <laughs> because my member I couldn't do it. Yes, yes. I couldn't do it. I, I was urinating there and I must have wait. Remember when I could have a pee pee. You remember that mm -hmm. I couldn't urinate enough? You know? I didn't know when I wanted to. It was there and I did I didn't you know you have a sensation when you want to say yes you go use I didn't know. I, I, I never had a feeling for no more want to it. And I was messing up myself. And now I'm going to want to go sometime. I want to go and I do something. I don't want to let me go and do look at that. So I couldn't go do that. You know, I just <laughs> really want to say thank you, Lord. And thank yes, you, yes. sir. And yes. thank God for this house. Because you may be tired of hearing it, but that's what I used to live. This place sustains me. I have to every time it's not about the works that you do around here but when you have something to do in the house of the lord it helps you because you know that it has to be done yes other people can do it yes god can find another yes a person can say somebody move a chair there whatever but when you have something and you make it a part of your life that's what i do i tell myself that i cannot live without being here this is my if you talk to me too long i tell you that this is my life and it may seem boring to some people, but this is my life. I have no life outside of this. I don't need any life outside. I tell God that I say, Lord, I'd rather dead than serve the devil because I'm mean, not being a scaffolding either. No, sir, so you pronounce the scaffolding no because you can't have done so much for me. And I forget that. I no mean, one forget that. Because you see, the moment you forget that, you're going to forget God. You're going to forget God. And if I think about all my childhood coming up up until this age, God has been so good. So good. So good. I didn't even know that I could even read and write, you know, Jonathan. You think that I think that I could even read and write? I couldn't do that when I write them, so I write like factor around down here. And I live this to God. Fix up my handwriting to people, stand up and I said to me when I work as Spanish show and say, but fear boss don't need no typewriter. Cause God, God let me meet different people, can talk. Me not no subject, you know, Jonathan? Me not have no subject, I'm a work so much different. If you look for my resume, you think so me I will tap a tap. You understand what I'm saying? And I know that all of that is God. All of that. And as Uncle Alton I came in and hear him say all oh, things work together for good. Sometimes you're going through some things even as a child and you think to the person that you they are doing it as they are doing this as an abuse. But you learn because I remember when I was a child and we used to me have to cook. They know what they know. Me have to cook, me have to clean, but it helps me now. Yeah. Because yeah. I can do that for myself. Praise you. And I know when it is done properly. And I can fix things for myself. I may not have the stamp to say that I have this and that or whatever. But I just want to know that I have the stamp of approval from God. Because it's not, it's not you make yourself righteous. It's not you make yourself good. It is God. Amen. It is God. And without God, you realize that you are nothing. Amen. Not care how you look. Not care where you are. You are nothing. And I came here in this house and I have learned. Some of us will need to testify. 
We need to testify. Don't sit on it. Because persons need to know that when Apostle is up here talking about he's not gloating. He's not gloating. And if my God, my God, my God, because it is true, this place is a different. And it's not because in the air, I don't have what me to tell them. Mm. Me to tell them, I learn how to live. I learn how to be satisfied. I learn, I learn different things. Learn forgive. You learn for use a word for replace things that the enemy carry. And you teach you how to hide the word in your heart. You teach you how to let the word cleanse you. And you teach you how to let the word wash you. You teach you how to... If I had been here earlier on, I would not have lost my marriage. Because I learn, I watch it, and he's not just saying it to you, he is doing it. He's giving you the theory from the word, and he's doing the practical of his lifestyle. And I give God thanks. I give God thanks to young people, a love on you, a bless, on a bless. Praise I God. never had what you guys had. I never have it. I never had it. I was in the church when I was 18 years, I got, bap I got baptized, but you are blessed. He will sit down as low as you are, as short as you are, as low as you don't understand, talk with you young people. Don't lose it. I think about you young people in this house. Don't waste it. I was talking about him yesterday and I was saying that I have seen where he's sitting with young person and said, you'll be a father. I am 51 year old and I'm 50 year old, but I'm after my father too. And you know, when I see my baby, Daddy, oi! I start calling him Padre now, because everybody has said, Daddy, so I want to feel like special, so I said, Padre. <laughs> you know, but I mean, when you think of everything, we don't know what's going to come. Because the enemy listens to our testimony and listen and see what you're doing. And he goes up and plan our, but God is always God. And yes. God has been God from ages to ages. And he has never lost the battle. And from once you honor God, he's going to honor you. And when you Amen. cry out to the Lord, he's going to help you. He's going to strengthen you. He's going to give you power. He's going to teach you. He's going to give you wisdom. He's going to rebuke you for some time if you, if, you, if you sip up this or whatever. But he's going to come again and nurture you and Amen. build you up and bring you into higher heights and deeper depths and carry out in green pastures. Amen. And I, and I praise God. I pray, I said, I feel like praising, praising him. Hey, I feel like praising, praising him. I'm going to praise him in the morning. Praise him all day long. I feel like praising, praising him. done anything for you Hallelujah. and you know that if it had not been for the Lord by your side no one have to beg you to praise him come on somebody we praise men for less than that so how much more should we praise God come on somebody and God is the one who's making it all possible he will use men but we should still be mindful it is he 
that is working through men to bring the favor and his goodness and his intent over our lives. Hallelujah. And we are always mindful of that here. I always make it a thing that it is God. Hallelujah. Because this could not be man. And I'm sure it could not be man. Hallelujah. Because I know what man can do. But God is teaching me what he can do. Hallelujah. And he said be imitators of God. Not imitators of men. Oh Jesus. Be imitators of God. As is their children. Praise God. And I love to do that. Because I know grace is flowing. When we connect with God. Grace flows. And grace is the show of God's power. Praise God. The same power he said he used to raise up Jesus from the dead. That put him above all principalities and powers and seated him at his right hand. He says that same power is working towards us. Come on. That same power is working towards us. So it don't matter how much they do to Jesus' body and how much they guarded that tomb, that power rose him up. Move that stone away from the grave. Ascend him on high and place him at the right hand of the Father. What do you say? Now that kind of power is some real power. And if that power is working towards you, you don't have an excuse not to serve God. Come on somebody. Because that power has marked you as victorious. That power cannot fail. It's not JPS. Oh no, no, no. Hello. It's, it don't go off and because there's work going on in the air. <laughs> Hallelujah. But that power is working at all times. Jesus says, my father is always working. Praise God that my father don't take a day off. Hallelujah. Thank God for that. Otherwise, the devil would have come on a day off and destroy me. Praise God. We thank God that God don't take a day off from his work. Hallelujah. But he's always working. And as he's working, so I work. What do you say? Praise God. Bless the Lord. Any more testimony in the house? Those who know what the Lord's been doing need to tell it so somebody can hear it. You know, because we know God is working. And in the way God working, you need to talk. Amen. Yeah, man, anyway, God working, you need to talk because you're opening door for him to do more for you. You're giving him the glory. Praise God. Yes, praise God. Hello. Good, good Come morning. over here. Good morning, everyone. Yes. Just want to give God thanks for the turnaround in my marriage and in my family. Praise because God. When I just come here, my marriage was <laughs> a disaster. Because I'm yeah. not fire and even though my husband is unsafe i can see where there is major change in the marriage no more cuss and quarrel as before no the holy ghost at least so we learn to take things and like talk about things and stuff yes no cuss no quarrel and no fight we can do things as marriage couple now when i time we not even did one go out with me husband and so because a pastor say yes you can you can go out whatsoever. So yeah, if he asks, we know we say yeah pastor, but most of the time like you want to go there and then stuff them in a one go there. I tell you too, we left church week before last. He was at his uncle to have the gin a pastor. And when I go up there, I could just yes, tell you, they said, yeah, here's yeah, 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 not for me, you can't stay here, yeah, so. That's how I'm going to look up here, grave up or something. You know what, stay up here, so. No, grave can't hold your body down, man. We have just power over that. God thanks Praise for everything God. That, he has, that he has done in this marriage. Because now we have a testimony. You know we've been through a pastor. Yes, yes. We've been through hell, but can't speak to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Isn't that good? Yeah, man, several times some people know the issues around here. But we praise God that they have a testimony now. Many others have not had issues like they had. And they are not together today. 
Praise God. So when we see marriages working in an environment like this, we have to give God praise. Hallelujah. Even with the ungodly. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Even with the ungodly. You know, so I mean God tell you that even if the, the, the husband does is not one who obeys the word to your chaste and quiet and gentle conduct, you can win him without a word. Them the kind of thing they're powerful. Them thing they believe in, you know, to get good results. And that's in First Peter three. You can read it and get some substance from it. But it will tell you how to use the word of God to get victory in every circumstance. Come on. So the word of God doesn't just work on a good day, on a bright day, among some good people. No, the word of God work even in hell. You stay there. Praise God. The word of God work anywhere. Hallelujah. But you got to mix that word with faith. Come on. And why those people end up in hell anyways? Because they lack that faith. Because the word of God says we overcome the world and they overcome the enemy, the devil, by faith. Hallelujah. So a lot of people will not make it because they are turning away from what brings faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And if you turn away from who is declaring the word and the word itself, you cannot stand. Hallelujah. Because both are necessary for you to stand. And God made it that way. It's not man set it up that way. God said it that way. And so it is the wisdom of God to put it in that way that none can glory in themselves that they just did it of themselves. Because God used somebody to bring you in. That's how you go. Yeah, man. God used somebody to bring you in and, and God is using some flesh to bring you into the purpose that he has called you into. Come on somebody. Hallelujah. Any more testimony in the house? We know we have it. So many we wait upon it. Praise God. We wait upon it before we start to call on here. Hallelujah. Praise God. Come and testify of what the Lord has done. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Um, I am actually testifying. I was out of a job for over a year now, back and forth. Um, you know, you know. Sometimes I get a job, I go on it, but you know, it doesn't work out and all of that. And for over a year now, I have been redundant. And then I get called back to go back to work. And you know, I'm back, and you know. For the past two weeks, I started, you know, everything has been good, you know. I've been seeing some improvements and all of that. So, you know, I have to give God thanks. You know, I have to give God all the praise and all the glory, you know. I have never, my mortgage has been paid. I've never poor mortgage since, um, since the corona and everything. I have food, I'm 90, and you know, it's, I'm a single mom. So, I have to just thank God every day. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. So, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Apostle. <laughs> That's right. Tell it. Because God, they do something. Can't yes, make you look like God now, nah, do nothing. Mm -mm. Nah, and I accept that one day. Praise God. So, even in the time she was in and out of work, because she was doing some work in between the year, but some odd work. Hallelujah. And sometimes some works not pay as they told you it would pay. And the benefits don't come as they told it would come. But God still sustained her with things during that year to keep her afloat that it didn't become overwhelming and plunge her into deep debt and have her, she could easily well be on the street. Come on. God is a good God. Hallelujah. And God has been providing for her and more provision is coming. Glory to God. And that is it. I know she's in a more ideal job that she wants. And God is working it together for her. Good. Praise God. Isn't God good? Yes. Praise God. More testimony in here, man. We wait for more testimony. Hallelujah. Who is in here to testify? Praise God. Who is in here to testify? Eh? Who is in here to testify, Jonathan? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
So we, we, we know that God is doing a great work. We just want to encourage you to tell about it because we know when you do, you're opening doors for him to do more. Come on. Because that's how we have acknowledging him in all your ways. Acknowledging him. And he said if you acknowledge him in all your ways, he will direct your path. Hallelujah. How do you acknowledge someone? Come on. You make them known. Come on. So, so if I say, I, I would like to acknowledge Sister Gordon. Sister Gordon, I'd like to acknowledge you. Please stand. Please stand. Praise God. See, everybody is looking on Sister Gordon. Now, even those who are here that didn't know that was Sister Gordon. Now know his sister God. That's what acknowledging does. So I have acknowledged her in the congregation. So when you acknowledge the Lord, that's what you are doing. When you don't do that, then everybody can come and talking and conversing with you and don't know what the Lord is doing in your life. But when you acknowledge the Lord, you get it? When you acknowledge him, he brings direction to you. And the word of God say, lead his people like sheep into what? Green pastures. He made them to lie down by the still waters. And he what? Restores their soul. He lead them in a path of righteousness. For his name's sake. Come on. So that's what all these testimonies are. Setting you up for bigger things to happen for you. So you know one bigger things. Yes. yes, man, I saw the thing go. So when you acknowledge the Lord, you're setting the platform for him to be elevated and for him to elevate you. Or it's on. Yes. Praise God. So you humble yourself. He said he will exalt you. You exalt yourself, you will be a base. Come on. That's his policy, his kingdom principle. Hallelujah. And so we want you to get on board and get the victory going for you. Yes, sir. Amen. You already know, Jonathan. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And no, see, I saw me stay. You know, can't get it from this uncle. I just saw uncle stay. <laughs> yeah, listen. Um, I just want to give thanks for the daily provision that, you know, God has really been doing. Yes, sir. Right, over this past year. And just overall, you know, I've seen um, overflow even in clientele, even at the studio, and just out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know that mm -hmm. that's God, and I know that He's providing and making a path for me, the best path. You know, so I'm just sticking to that, staying in the Word. And I just give God thanks for how he's doing. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, man, more blessing. What you say? Amen. Yeah, man, more. I may never get more. So I have to give him a little push sometime. <laughs> but we're not pushing him on his face. It's just to push him in other thing. Amen. Praise God. Because more is coming. And we know when we acknowledge the Lord, that's what happened. Doors are opening every time you know that there's not a time you you give praise to god that a benefit don't come to you there's not a time that you give praise to god that a benefit don't come to you and david found that as a secret that's why david said i'll bless him early in the morning and then he said well i'll bless him late at night in the noon in midnight and then he says i'll bless the lord at all times he started to increase more and more because he found a secret hallelujah a secret that that unlocked treasures in his life is to keep on blessing the lord come on somebody and you 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 can't out bless the lord so when you bless him enough you know i'm going to praise god hallelujah you can't outdo him so whatever you're doing, there's going to be a response of God to you. Come on. And so we encourage you to bless the Lord. Come on. That's why David said, bless the Lord, O my soul, 
and all that is within me bless his holy name come on somebody so you 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 can't allow things to get in you that will choke and suffocate your praise to god but keep on praising him your attitude will determine your altitude and it's good to keep a good attitude before the lord come on that's why the word of god says come into his presence with thanksgiving he don't say come into it crying and mourning and fretting and frustrating and stressing and anxious he said no come with thanksgiving come with the right attitude and enter his courts with praise come in that court with a good attitude and say you're going to be rewarded hallelujah because god's going to give you what you desire when you delight yourself in him he said he will give you the desires of your heart come on so you have to get excited about god i think god have done more than enough for us to be excited about him so when we come with a dull you know a dull attitude it comes up as a stench before him in light of all that he has done so that's why we have to keep that you know keep the polarity straight you know what polarity it attracts things uh, hallelujah what what if if things are if the two negatives don't attract uh, two negatives don't attract it pushes away come on it pushes away so he, he wants you to attract positive things hallelujah into your life and so you have to change your polarity stop thinking on the things that get you down and make you feel gloomy and doubtful and stressed and anxious the lord said why are you thinking about those things why do you take thought about these things he says by worrying about them you can't add one cubit to your stature you can't make one here gray or white come on he says you need to just trust in the lord come on seek first his kingdom and all his righteousness huh? and all these things because he says the father knows what you have need of come on hello the father what he knows what you have need of he knows already so he's not telling you to tell him what you need because he doesn't know what you need the reason we pray and talk to god about our needs is because he asks us for that to have conversation with us because conversation communication is the lifeblood of every relationship so he wants to have relationship with you but it's not because he's ignorant of what you're going through so he says then why do you worry about it since he knows and he cares for you come on so he say you come with the right attitude glory to god and things start to shift into place what you say Hallelujah. you ready oh lord jesus all right we need to get into the word we need to get into the word you ready for the word all right uh, praise god hallelujah praise god couple of weeks now we have just been diving in some praise and worship but this week we want to get more in the in the word you want to build your most holy faith hallelujah hallelujah and let you understand the things that god has prepared for you in christ jesus because there's a lot in store for you and the devil wants you to stay ignorant about it you know over and over the devil keeps pushing things and circumstances and orchestrating things around you to keep you in a position of weakness in a position of ignorance in a position of fear and torment in a position that is opposed to god but we are calling you into a position that aligns you for the favor hello and for the blessing 
and the power of God to work in your life now more than ever. Come on. And there's no special time for this power to work. Hallelujah. Than just knowing that you need to exercise your faith. Hallelujah. You need to what? Exercise your faith. And that's something we, we, we need to tap into because many people run from the issues. Run from the issues that cause their faith to be exercised. That cause their what? <laughs> Hallelujah. They run from the issues that cause their faith to be exercised. Praise God. Hallelujah. And we want to set a new attitude, prepare you in a new attitude towards that. That will bring about good results for you. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And uh, oh my God. I hope that you you really coming with me on this. But we want to get more to you that you can really really get into the word. Hallelujah. Bow your heads and pray with me. And ask the Lord for grace to understand the word today. To prepare your hearts for him. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Come on. Father we thank you. For your grace and for your mercy. For your anointing that destroys every yoke. And lifts every burden. We pray for every hearer of the word that is assembled here and online. That is here to hear the word declared today. That every obstruction and distortion and distraction of the enemy. Every ploy that the enemy employ to seek to divert and to corrupt the word from having its full process and impact and effect in the hearts of your people will become of no effect right now in the name of Jesus that your anointing will remove and choke everything in the atmosphere that is not of you and render them powerless in Jesus name hallelujah let our hearts be inclined to your word now let your word take deep root in our hearts and produce fruit and much fruit and fruit that remains as we look to you in faith. Hallelujah. Let your angel host be as a wall of fire around us to guard us, our hearts and our mind, and keep us in the proper position to receive more from you and to activate your word in our lives that will bring glory to your name we give you the praise and the glory in Jesus' name come on give him the praise right now hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. all right we want to look at some some verses about exercising faith faith is like a muscle faith is like a what a muscle that needs to be exercised it's like a muscle that needs to be exercised and if faith is not where faith is not exercised then you become weak and lose some abilities you had when faith was active come on and that's what we want to prepare and equip you to come against today in the name of jesus because you overcome the devil by your faith Come on, somebody, and you overcome the world by your faith. And you also activate the word, the power in the word of God through faith. Even your salvation through grace comes through faith. And so there is nothing you can receive from God without faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so we want to get somewhere in that, that you can really examine and, and see where, what you need to brush up in that area and see how you can, you can have your faith. Come on. 
your faith tapping into the grace and anointing that God has provided for you in Jesus Christ. Come on. Praise God. Praise God. Now the word of God says that without faith, that's Hebrews 11 verse 6, without faith it is what? Impossible to please God. Without faith it is? That means for us to please God, we must have faith. For us to please God, we must have faith. Now, most people believe that faith is just having self-confidence. And some will believe that faith is just being, 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 being determined. Anything you determine to do and do it, that's faith. Anything you have courage to do and do it, that's faith. Anything you, you're very confident about, that's faith. But faith is declared by the Bible as more than just self-confidence and mere human confidence and determination from human flesh. It is something that is birthed through the Holy Spirit by the word of God in you. It is something that is what? birth through the Holy Spirit by the word of God in you and so it's not something you can just cultivate on your own come on now but it's something that God deposits, deposits in you to make you become active and functional in his kingdom come on now to make you become what active and functional in this kingdom and so we have to then check then how does faith come how does faith because for he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a what rewarder of those who diligently seek him that's Hebrews 11 verse 6 right it's because it says without faith it's impossible to please God for he who comes to God must believe that he is. is not may believe, but must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Not just those who seek him, but those who diligently seek him. Hallelujah. Wholeheartedly. Come on now. That, that, that faith is calling for a different level of activation from you through the power of the Lord working in you and it says then how does this faith comes it says faith comes by what hearing and hearing the word of God come on now it's Romans 10 verse 17 so then faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God come on now but he says, how will you hear without a preacher? How will you hear without a preacher? So he says, there is someone sent for that hearing to come to you. Glory to God. It's not something you don't see that one has developed by yourself. He says, someone is sent to develop that hearing in you. How then shall they call on him whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Come on now. Now, now there are sound waves going through the atmosphere right now. And sound waves from television stations, from radio stations, from internet broadcasts and things that are going on right around us now. All these sound waves are passing around all of us here right now. But unless we have a device that has a tuner to capture that frequency and to translate it into audible sound for us, we can't hear it. Come on. So, so if we turn on the radio right now and put it on a certain channel, it will find that it's been playing all along. The, ch the radio did not go to where the, 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 the stream is being broadcast from. 
but the radio catches the frequency that come from where it is being broadcast from and translate it into audible sound for us to hear now these preachers that the Lord sent they are able to catch this frequency of what God is declaring from heaven in the earth and declare it to the people now oftentimes these preachers will be called prophets because they hear things in the spirit and declare it in the earth come on now and God wants you to know that he's still using this principle and this is not something that is just done now ah come on now but this is something that was done from long time ago come on he says how shall they preach unless they are sent as is written how beautiful are the feet of those who what preach the gospel of peace who bring glad tidings of good things now they were sent to declare what they declared in other words they are not declaring things from their own imagination they are not declaring things that they feel to say unlike some that are speaking today and they don't even call them much preachers again they call them speakers and some call motivational speakers hallelujah but it's not motivational speakers and speakers he's sending out mm. these are equipped with an anointing and with a word hallelujah that should cut through every thing that the enemy has set up to block roadblock you and hold you captive in his regime this word is sent to bring you out of light out of darkness into light to bring you out of captivity into true liberty in christ jesus come on now so it says if we declare a word that's coming against a kingdom you need power to do it uh, you better know that because the kingdom we're speaking against has power oh jesus come on paul spoke about that when he says he's been sent to turn them from the power of satan to the power of god so if we say from the power of satan satan must have power come on now i think it's in acts 26 verse 18 yes hallelujah it says to open this is what paul said he was sent by the lord to do in acts 26 verse 18 to open their eyes in order to turn them from darkness to light and from what the power of satan to god that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me come on somebody this is paul's declaration of the mission that god had sent him on amen and that the mission that god had sent him on this was what he was told to do glory to god and if he's told to do it then he's empowered to do it by the one who sent him come on now by the one who who sent him so therefore he doesn't just come wanting to just do some good trying to help somebody no he's <laughs> he's authorized and anointed and appointed for this work glory to god he's what authorized anointed and appointed for this work come on now now that is why Paul's declaration comes with such strong statements. Hello. Come with such strong statements as in Galatians 1. It's Galatians 1 verse 3 to 5. In Galatians 1 verse 3 to 5. You find that Paul makes some statements that if he's not... If he's speaking of himself and if he's speaking as just a man trying to help somebody, then these kind of statements he make, hallelujah, can put him in some serious trouble. Hello? Come on, somebody. 
He says in verse 3, Grace to you and peace from God the Father, for Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for sins that he might deliver us from this present evil age, according to what? The will of our God and Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Verse 6, Hallelujah. He says, I marvel, yes, that's the verse. I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ. Who called you what? In the grace of Christ to a different gospel, which is not another. In other words, it's not a different gospel. But he says, but there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. And want to what? Pervert the gospel of Christ. Come on now. Hallelujah. But even if we, he says, are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel. Come on now. Preach what? Any other gospel to you than what we have preached to you. Let him be accursed. As we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone preaches any other gospel uh, to you than what you have received, let him be accursed. Now this is some strong statement to make. If we believe that every person who comes wanting to point people to the Lord and comes with a message that say yes accept the Lord as your personal savior is sent by the Lord then we're going to be in trouble you know the reason we're going to be in trouble is that after they tell you accept the Lord the message uh, divert the message detour in some teachings that Christ did not give nor did the apostles teach and if the message divert from what Christ teach and the apostles preach, you can't believe that's a true message for the church. And I know that won't be soothing to many today that believe anywhere there are some people that they have Bibles and they clap and sing song, drop offering and somebody in the platform is a church. As if you have that low estimation and valuation of what is church, anything can become a church for you. But there's a standard in the scripture that Paul knew why he made such statement and said, if it's even an angel come from heaven. This is some serious talk and I, I'm sure you've heard many of them said to you, no, we all serve in the same God we may have different views and opinions, but we all, and we teaching may not all agree, but we all serve the same God. This was not Paul's view. This would be arrogant for Paul to say anybody preach a different gospel. Let him be a curse. And it becomes scripture. And we then treat it as though, no man, this disregard that Paul was just saying that in a moment of feeling, you know, when he wrote that letter, but you can't really use it in a broad aspect today. You know, today we can have one God, three God, baptized Father, Son, Holy Ghost, Jesus only. Uh, Lord Jesus, worship Sabbath, Sunday, and all kind of different things, and each one saying it's wrong, but yet still you can choose because you have a multiple choice of churches but but Paul was saying hey if it don't line up with the gospel right. it's not the gospel right. you better hear this good if it doesn't line up with the gospel it's not the gospel and he says we were sent to preach the gospel and it's not a gospel it is the gospel Come on. And this has to do with the kingdom of God. And he says, this kingdom uh, is an everlasting kingdom. He says, then you, you are not called to this, to, to an if, but, and maybe. It's a sure word. And he says, we are not gambling with people's soul. 
We are not here handling the word of God deceitfully. We are not here handling the word of God just some monetary gain or to get a crowd or to get recognized and applauded by the world. We are not here to please people. Those who are sent to preach this gospel must have it first and foremost to please God. Come on somebody. And those who want to please God will receive this gospel. Or those who are looking to please somebody else, to please some organization, because many have shifted from being ambassadors of Christ to becoming ambassadors of their religious organization. You get what I'm saying? And so their loyalty to the organization have somehow take priority to their loyalty to Christ. And so some of the words of Christ get pushed aside because it speak against their organizational belief or the organizational doctrine. But when you put loyalty to Christ first, it don't matter what kind of organization you are part of. The word of Christ will always serve priority to what they ever teach in our sin. And you will know that that is what is called gospel. Come on now. It's not something that you can tamper with and it still be the same. This is what Paul is saying, you know. It's not something you can tamper with and it still be the same. Because what Paul was saying here to the Galatians is saying, including himself, he said, if we are an angel from heaven, if we, let me say, if he even come back later to change it, they should not receive him. Come on now. You better hear this thing good. So he's not saying, oh, we up to all different views because we can have different views and they still agree. In other words, we can see something from different angles. And when we put the angles that we have seen together, it still fits with the whole of the picture that we are looking at. But it's if what we are seeing conflicts with each other, then we can't say we're looking at the same thing. Somebody's seeing something different. Come on now. And that is not coming by the same spirit that empowered these men to preach the gospel. And that's why Paul said, if we, did you notice that? In verse 8 of Galatians chapter 1, even if we, he's not just saying he himself, but all the preachers, and even an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel, he says, and what we have preached to you, let him be accursed. Now this, of course, is not friendly in the community of churches we have gathering today that are calling themselves, you know, united. Uh, we are the united ministers. We are the united people under the umbrella of this name and that name because we find that there is controversy, there is arguments, there is quarreling there is strife, there is divisions and Paul one point had to ask them is Christ divided? Is Christ divided? And they know that's a rhetorical question that of course Christ is not divided. So he says then, how then do we come out with leaders that are divided? Come on now. Someone has lost focus of what they're here to do. And he said, if blind is leading blind, then both will fall into the pit. But for where there is no vision, the people perish. And many have lost their vision and still trying to feel their way through. Many have lost their connection and still pretending like they got it. 
Huh? Many have lost their relationship with the Lord and still behaving like the relationship is still intact. This was what Paul was speaking against and saying these people are doing these things in hypocrisy. Come on now. Even John declared against this thing. Come on, in 1 John 4, verse 1 to 5, John declared, likewise as Paul declared. So this is not something just to, 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 to Paul. But John declared it in 1 John 4, from verse 1 to 4. He says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit. Come on. But test the spirits. Spirits, plural. Whether they are of God, because what? Many false prophets. Notice he didn't say false disciples. He didn't say false members. We have a lot of that for true. But he's talking about leaders. When he go to prophets, he's talking about preachers. Those who should declare the word of truth to the people. And he says then, many false prophets have gone out into the world. Huh? And he says, by this we, we know, huh? we know the spirit of God. Huh? Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come into the flesh huh? is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already. Did he say already? Is now already in the world. Come on. Now if he says already, it's already here. But he says, the spirit of the Antichrist, isn't that? He says, you are of God, little children, and have overcome them. So he doesn't say, you were of God, is the same as them. He makes a distinction between you and them. Correct? You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because he who is in you, is greater than he who is in the world. They are of the world, therefore they speak as of the world. And what happened? The world hears them. We know who is of the world because those who are of the world hear those prophets. Oh, Jesus. Watch the thing, you know. What's the next verse? We are of God. He who knows God hears us. Now, oh, come on now. Come on now. Now, some may think Paul was arrogant to say, if anyone preach any other gospel, let him be a curse. Now, they would of course say that John is arrogant too. Because John said, if they don't hear us, they are not of God. But this is not arrogance, this is boldness through the faith they have in the one who called them and sent them. Because they weren't just sent out as, pers as birds being released out of a nest. But they were released with a word, with a mandate and a mission to accomplish. And the Lord told them the word to say and the work to do. So they didn't come just coming. They come to fulfill a divine assignment of their lives. Come on now. And he says, that's all he says. Those who hear us, those who what? hear us is of God those who hear us not is not of God but he says by this we know the spirit of truth 
<laughs> and the spirit of error. Oh, come on, somebody. Now, the spirit, Jesus made reference to the spirit of truth. And who is the spirit of truth? The Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit confirms the word of God. It confirms what Jesus says. Hallelujah. Because Jesus spoke about the Holy Spirit and said he's the spirit of truth. Come on. And he says the world doesn't know him. Come on now. Because the world doesn't see him. The world don't know him. But he says those who believe in Christ, <laughs> they, they know him. He's with them and will dwell in them. Come on, somebody. And that inner witness living in them will draw them and unveil to them the true character and nature of truth. Because the spirit of truth leads you to true understanding and connection in truth. Are you following here? Hello? The spirit of truth leads you to true connection and fellowship with the truth. If there's no truth in it, it can't be true fellowship. Hello? You can't have true relationship without truth. So truth is vital to this connection. Come on, somebody. So Jesus spoke of the Holy Spirit as the spirit of truth. John 16 verse 13 says, Over when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth for he will not speak on his own authority. In other words, the Holy Spirit is not speaking what he feels to speak. Ah, but he's speaking confirming what Jesus spoke. What it is. But whatever he hears, he will speak. He will tell you things to come. He will what? Tell you things to come. And he tells you that the Holy Spirit is not there to speak of himself, but he's there to confirm all those things he has spoken. And he says, he will bring back to remembrance all those things that I have said to you. Come on. He will what? Bring back to your remembrance what? All those things that I have said to you. So the Holy Spirit is there to confirm what Jesus said. And when Jesus came, Jesus wasn't there speaking of himself either. He says, the words I speak, they are not my own. But what I hear the Father speak, that I also speak. So you can see the work between the Father the Word and the Holy Spirit working together as one. So we don't come to a place where we separate from the Spirit and know the truth. I only skip that to you one more time. We don't come to a place where we separate from the Spirit of truth and know the truth. It is the Spirit of truth that leads us into truth. Hallelujah. And it's the truth that makes us true worshipers of the God of truth. Watch the thing. There is the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit. There is the truth which is Jesus. And there's the God of truth which is the Father. There's a process that you go through to come into that fullness. He called it a protocol of how you approach someone in authority. He's, Jesus made it this way. He says, none can come unto me unless the Holy Spirit draws them. You heard that one? None, Jesus was saying that. None can come unto me unless the what? The Holy Spirit, the Spirit draws them. Correct? Hallelujah. So he says then, if the Holy Spirit doesn't draw you, you can't come to him. Come on, follow me where I'm teaching here. Praise God. So if the Holy Spirit don't call you, you can't come to him because the Holy Spirit is the one that does that drawing. Correct. 
so if you understand that the Holy Spirit is the one doing the join then you can't have true connection with Christ without the Holy Spirit now many are trying to have that connection without the Holy Spirit and that's why the, the spirit of error start to manifest both in the doctrines and in their attitude and in their behavior towards truth becomes hostile because the spirit that is operating in them is a spirit of error and that's what John was saying you can know the spirit that is operating you can test and know whether the operating of the spirit of truth or the spirit of error come on now the spirit of truth or what the spirit of error now the spirit of error is the spirit of lies lies does not set you free lies put you into bondage it works opposite to truth truth sets you free glory to God but lies put you in bondage to more lies come on now so lies can only be sustained with more lies but truth can stand on its own you hear that one lies are sustained by what more lies but truth can stand on its own because the fabric of truth is true right true but lies of a mixture is fabricated <laughs> hallelujah is tailored to have an appearance that is not genuine to its content and so that's why i said it can be proven if it is truth or not but many are swayed by how they feel if they hear something and it feel right to them they say that's truth if they see something and it look good to them they say that's truth but truth has a more internal evidence than just external because lies can sound like truth Ah, oh, Jesus lies can look like truth but it doesn't bear the true content of truth and so you, that's why the word of God says we walk by faith and not by sight because the devil is a deceiver come on now the devil is what he's a deceiver and he tailors things to appear true when it is not so if you are going by how it look and are not listening to the inner voice of the spirit of truth speaking to you you can be deceived are you hearing this you can be deceived and that's the thing that jesus warned the most to his disciples to look out for he says be beware lest you be deceived it wasn't about the earthquakes and the wars and the rumors of wars and the nation against nation and the plagues and the pestilence that people looking at and say, see there the end of the age now. He says, uh uh. He says, when you see these things, the end is not yet. These are just the beginning of sorrows for the world. But why are these the beginning of sorrows for the world? He says, because they have refused the truth a strong deception a strong delusion is going to come upon them and they are going to sway right into the hand of the devil now most people forget that the devil won't be operating by himself in these last days but the word of God speaks about the antichrist <laughs> his chief one is going to use like the superhero of the world this new savior of the world is what the devil is presenting his antichrist to be and there's also one called the prophet the false prophet 
who will stand by him, who will represent the religious community. Come on now. And then there's the beast, one who will represent the militant force in the earth. And when these three combine, come on now, those who are not enlightened to truth will not resist. They will fall a prey to the enemy's teeth. Because God already made a way for them to escape. And he says, the only escape is in you knowing the truth. Not some of the truth. Part of the truth. But the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Because any perversion of the truth is not truth. That's what Paul was saying clearly. Come on now. That's what Paul was saying clearly in Galatians chapter 6. Come on. That any perversion of the gospel is not the gospel. Did you hear this? Any perversion of the gospel is not the gospel. That's what he said in Galatians 1 verse 6 to 7 praise God he, he says there are some that seek to pervert the gospel and he said if, it, if it's a perverted gospel it's not really the gospel if we declare perverted truth to you it is not the truth correct because the truth must be truth and nothing but the truth to be truth it can't be mixed and be truth it can't be mixed with lies and be truth because there is no lie of the truth come on now what's that first john 2 verse 20 21 praise god there is no lie of truth and so to say that it's all right he's speaking the truth but some lies in it that's not true because the, 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 the most deceptive lies have some truth placed in it ah Jesus the most deceptive lies have some truth placed in it if it was all lies no one would believe it but they carefully plan truth in some areas wanting to give the person the resemblance and feel of truth without really experiencing the true nature of truth and that's what makes it highly deceptive and that's why the Lord called us to challenge this devil, this deceiver that has come to bring the world under his deception. Hello. And the word of God caused these leaders to bring be bearers of the light to expose these things, these hidden plots and conspiracy of darkness to deceive and to destroy the hearts of men. To corrupt truth that they would hear truth and said no it's a lie because they already believe the lie they have is the truth and that is the work of Satan from the beginning until now this is not a new agenda for him it's not a new course and a new strategy for destroying the lives of men. It's what he did from the beginning. From in Genesis chapter 3. We find that that's the very tactic he used. To challenge the truth of God. Which is the word of God. By other thoughts and opinions. That does not agree with the word. And anytime you want to put thoughts and opinion. Above what the word expressly says. You are going into error. Come on, to, come on, somebody. You got this one. This is a very serious note.
to bring the church to, to become aware and conscious of the need to be in the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. And there, there must be a point of detoxing everything out of your understanding and knowledge pertaining to the Lord that is not of truth. Come on, somebody. You got that? He says, I have written to you, John said, in 1 John 2, verse 21 to 22, I have not written to you because you do not know the truth, John says, but because you know it, and that no lie is of truth. Did you see that? No lie is of truth. In other words, any lie in what they declare to you is truth is not truth. Because there is no lie in truth. Come on. When it's true, it's true, right true. Come on now. You know, we, he says, who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ. He is Antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Come on. Who denies the Father and the Son. Are you hearing that? Now, any switching of the word to tell a different message is not done by the Holy Spirit. I'm talking to you. Any switching of the word to tailor a different message is not done by the spirit of truth. Because he says the spirit of truth is the Holy Spirit will not speak of his own authority. But will confirm those things which I said to you. Come on. And he comes to confirm them with signs and with wonders. Come on now. So if you are veering, any speaker veering and switching from the truth is not one who is speaking as an oracle of God, but one who has a personal agenda that is seeking to accomplish, to gain some popularity, material goods, our worldly fame. But when you connect to do this of God, it don't matter whether people come or people go. Whether they keep listening to you or you don't keep listening to you. Because this is a service unto the Lord. Come on now. It's a service unto the Lord. So it's not done to impress people so more can stay. Mm hmm Come on now. There are several times that Jesus spoke messages and it caused even disciples that he had and even apostles he set up within his, his ranks to leave. If Jesus is all about maintaining the crowd, he would not say it. Because even those that were faithful to stay said to him, Master, this thing you say is a hard thing. Come on. But they, but when he asked them, would you leave too? They said, where will we will go, master? For with you there is eternal life. Come on. Their loyalty to him was not broken. Come on. Because of the harshness of the teaching. How hard that teaching sound to swallow. Come on. Because they love truth. More than anything else. It's the mark of a true disciple of Christ. To love truth. More than anything else. Come on somebody. Whenever that love for truth start to fade. Your connection as a true disciple. Also starts to fade. And also starts to become corrupt. By the world. Come on somebody. But we want you to abide in the truth. Come on now. And Jesus said it in John chapter 8, verse 31 to 36. He was speaking to Jews who believed on him. He was speaking to who? Jews who believed on him. Praise God. And Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, 
John 8 verse 31 if you abide in my word that word there is doctrine Jesus had some doctrine he was declared and he said if you abide in my word you are my disciples indeed in other words you are not my disciples indeed in truth unless you abide in what I teach you watch that next thing he says after that he says you shall know the truth you see it now and the truth shall make you free he says they answered him we are Abraham's descendants and I've never been in bondage to anyone how can you say you will be made free in other words they are not thinking as being connected to the speaker having any relation to them being connected to the truth the speaker brings that's why they say we have not been in bondage to any man why should we stick to you to be set free because he's telling them you will know the truth if you abide in my doctrine you become my disciples and you know the truth and the truth make you free so they are saying we don't need to be in no bondage to you why should we be locked on to you we have not even been in bondage to any man come on but Jesus says most assuredly I say to you in verse 34 whoever commits sin huh? whoever commits sin is a slave of sin in other words, he says, you're already in bondage. God don't send you a deliverer if you're not in bondage. Come on now. God don't send you a deliverer if you're not in bondage. There is bondage that call for you to have a deliverer. And it's not the first time God has raised up a deliverer for his people. Come on, somebody. Moses was called a deliverer. And the Lord spoke to Abraham long before Israel even came into being. And told Abraham his children would be in bondage in Egypt. But he would raise up a deliverer to take them out. Which was Moses. Come on. But so you can't be attached to the, to the message without being attached to the messenger. Ah, oh, Jesus. Because all the message didn't come in one shot. There's more still coming. Hallelujah. And if you're not connected to the messenger, you're going to miss some of the message that are vital to your deliverance. Watch the thing. So he says, a slave does not abide in the house forever. He says, yes, you may be in the house in the family, in the family of God, in the household under God's covering, while you're still a sinner, you're under the covering of the house. But he said, You're not staying there like that. While you're sinning, we still call you. We didn't call you before you stopped sin. So you came in with that position. But he says, We're not keeping you. In that position. Come on somebody. So yes they, they said. Jesus was a friend of sinners. A lot of tax collectors. And, and a lot of prostitutes. And uh, publicans. And thieves. And drunkards. And persons who were living a moral life. Hanged around him. But he says hey. When the Pharisees stood up and said. If you so holy and living so right. Why is so much sinners around you? He said don't. You, have you read? Those who are sick. Seek physician. When people are sick. They don't seek people who are sick. To get them healthy. They seek those who are whole. To make them whole. Come on somebody. So uh, no one is getting up and running to a physician who's sick. You know the physician's sick and not well. You're not going to look for him. 
You want one that is well to make you well. And he says, those who are sick, not true, seek a position. Now many of them take that word and go, oh, your man. But the contents of truth was saying, those who are sick, seek Jesus. And Jesus is still the head of the church. So if you can't get no help in the church, you don't have help nowhere. Because he is still the head of the church. And so when he says seek physician, where should you be running for your healing? Lord God. Isn't the Lord declare that I am the Lord that healeth thee? I am the Lord your healer. I said, I send my word and heal your disease. Come on, somebody. His word produces healing. His word of God says, the word of God is like medicine. Come on. If you are made by the word and made for the word, then the word of God can heal every ailment in your body. Come on. But many don't have that faith anymore. They said, no, that was necessary back in the days when technology wasn't where it was today. Come on. So now they start to depend more on technology and less on the word of God. Talk to me now. They said, that time we never knew science wasn't so advanced that it was. We needed a miracle. Now we are so advanced, we don't need no miracles anymore. We are so educated now. Ah, we have pill to put you to sleep and pill to wake you up. Pill to slow you down when you are overexcited and pill to make you have a pep back in your step. Pill for depression, pill for happiness. We got happy pill to fix everything. Come on now. But the word of God has been pushed back as something for the religious, the narrow-minded, simple-hearted fools that are uneducated. And that's why the Lord says, not many wise have come to this. Not many scholars of the world. Not many philosophers. Come on, somebody. Because you got to understand that many are looking for the world's wisdom to empower them. But the wisdom of God, even the foolish thoughts of God, is wiser than the wisdom of the world. Come on. Because what they call wisdom lacks the knowledge of God. Come on now. And that's what makes their wisdom foolish. You hear that one? Because anyone with intellect and a well thinker will say, if I need to know how to operate as a creature within this creation, I need to have some communication with my creator. But they have bypassed that talk to the creator as religious behavior and waste of time. As now they have intelligence. Now they got knowledge. <laughs> and knowledge is power uh -huh. and what have their power brought death and destruction maim and disaster violence and crime come on poverty my God and corruption greed and distortion that's what the wisdom of this world has brought come on but the wisdom of God is pure. The wisdom of God is, 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 is gentle. It's meek. It's holy. Come on. The wisdom of God is not sensual and earthly and demonic. And a lot of people just looking for wisdom. But they're looking in all the wrong places. Come on. The wisdom of God does not destroy your life. It gives you life. Come on somebody. And it's a life that is. That goes beyond this natural life. Hello. That's why Paul said it. 
in first corinthians 2 1 verse 26 for you can see your calling brethren that not many wise according to the flesh not many mighty not many noble are called but god has chosen what the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise and god has chosen the weak things of the world to put the thing to shame the things which are mighty come on it's the world called them mighty it's the world that called them wise but the lord says because the world has set aside his knowledge and his word set aside his wisdom then their wisdom cannot be true wisdom you can't have true wisdom without truth Oh, Jesus. Come on, somebody. Give me more on that. Praise God. He says, and base, the base things of the world, the things which are despised, God has what? Chosen. And the things which are not to bring to nothing, the things that are that no flesh should glory in his presence. Come on. Now they still boasting in their education still boasting in their scientific knowledge still boasting in their achievements and accomplishment that they have discarded what god is saying to them they need to come back to the wisdom of god hello somebody and we are calling you to this wisdom amen, amen. we are calling you to the wisdom of god hallelujah that is in christ jesus Hello, because many have been deceived and many more will be deceived because they have taken on the wisdom of the world and not the wisdom of God. They are not the same. Hello, somebody. Praise God. It says, the, the, give me the first, yeah, praise God. He, he says, give me from verse 14. Hallelujah. James 3 verse 14. It says, but if you have bitter envy, have what? Bitter envy and self-seeking. And what? Self-seeking in your heart. Huh? Do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above. Any lie that boasts against the truth is, is the world still call it wisdom? Because they said if you, if you tell a lie, if you get out of one problem, a wise you're wise. Not true. They tell you if you lie, you're wise, man. You know if it's, you know if you say when you say it. Come on. And they call that wisdom. He says, this wisdom, he calls it wisdom, you know. But he says, this wisdom does not descend from above. It doesn't come from the Father, is what he said. He says, but it is earthly, sensual, and demonic. Come on, that's James 3, verse 14 to 17. For where envy and self-seeking exists, where you become self-centered and covetous and envious, he says, all kind of confusion and every evil thing are there. Now we know that God is not the author of confusion. So we know who is doing that. He says, but the wisdom that is from above is what? It's first pure. Then peaceable. Gentle. Willing to yield. Full of mercy. And good fruits. Come on. Without what? without partiality without what partiality and without what hypocrisy now if you have to fake it to make it it ain't real come on and if you have to side with someone to keep their friendship it ain't real come on because truth goes deeper than that Troop doesn't bear a, a certain kind of color and a certain kind of race and a certain kind of place 
and a certain kind of monetary gain. Truth is just truth. Simple and plain. Come on. And he said, if you embrace truth, come on now. If you what? Embrace truth. He says, truth will make you free. But what does he make you free from? Lies. Because from the beginning when men fell slave to sin, it was a lie that they were subjected to. Come on. In Genesis 3, when Satan said to the woman, You shall not surely die. For the Lord know that in this day you eat of this fruit, you shall become wise and be as gods. That was not truth. That was a lie. They exchanged the truth of God for a lie. And that's how they fell prey to Satan. And became his victim. Because one thing about serpent. He poisons those. Who stung by stung. Come on. Poison lies under the tongue of the serpent. And those who listen to him. Will be poisoned by his conversation. I don't call you to. Give heed to everybody. Come on now. You have to be careful how you listen. Come on now. And you have to be careful what you, who you're listening to. Hello. Come on. So the word was given to them by God. Said in a day you eat of this fruit you shall surely die. But now the serpent was telling her. No. You will not surely die. That word of truth is being challenged by another thought and idea that has no connection to truth. In fact, it opposes truth. And you should know anything that opposes the truth is a lie. Come on. Because truth does not oppose truth. Lord Jesus. Truth does not oppose truth. You got that one? So we know that from the beginning, this is how the devil tells it. Come on now. And John is saying in 1 John 1, 1 John 4, verse 1, you must test the spirit. Come on now. Whether they be of God or not. Come on. Because he says many false prophets have gone out into the world. And many will be deceived by them. Come on. But if you are in a congregation. If you are in a congregation where. You didn't know. Whether the prophet. The preacher of the word was true or not. The spirit of truth. That you pray to God to receive. Because every true believer must receive the Holy Spirit. And Paul tell the believer, be not drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of truth will show you, you know. If you're under someone misguiding you, misleading you, or you're under someone who is truly leading you into truth, because the Spirit of truth confirms truth. You got it? But some are getting confirmation. And I tell you, it's not the Lord. Nor the spirit of truth confirming it to them. It is the spirit of error. And this happens easy when you are still practicing sin. It's hard to resist lies when you are still serving the father of lies. <laughs> Come on now. And you got to understand. Satan is the father. Of all sin. Anyone that is in sin. Is serving him. Now they may say no we are not serving him. 
But did you realize the moment Adam sinned, he was under Satan's control. And immediately the Lord put him and his wife out of the garden. Come on. Out of the garden of his presence. They were thrown out. And angels were placed there to guard the tree of life. That they would not have access to it. The tree of knowledge and evil, good and evil was not guarded. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil was not guarded. It's a tree of life that was guarded from them. Come on. In other words, God is not giving this kind of life to people who are in sin. Lord Jesus. That was from the beginning. And it's still here now. Come on. So that's why Christ had to come to take away your sin. That he says, you now could receive the Holy Spirit. Because he said to his disciples in John chapter 14, he said, if, if I don't go, the Spirit will not come. If I don't go, he will not come. He's talking about his death. And he said, if I don't go to the Father, he will not send to you the Holy Spirit. The, the sin must be taken out of the way for you to receive the Holy Spirit. Now the Holy Spirit can work with you in sin, but he's not working in you in sin. And that's what the Lord was saying to his disciples. The Holy Spirit is with you, but he shall be in you. He shall be what? In you. There's a difference when the Holy Spirit is in you from when the Holy Spirit is with you. When he's with you, you still have that inclination and feeling to do things of the flesh and afterwards you feel convicted about it because he's with you but when he's in you and any temptation and feeling of sin comes along your way there's a, a rising up in your spirit a turning up your stomach against it the very nature in you comes against it because of who is residing in you so the with you and the in your life is not the same. And that's why we're encouraging people to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Because the word of God said, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he's none of his. Come on. And Christ is declared as the last Adam. That is the life, the, the life giving spirit. The what? Life giving spirit. He's the spirit that is giving life. What life is he giving? The life of God in Christ is eternal life. And that's the life of the spirit that is coming into you to manifest that life. You can't have eternal life without the Holy Spirit. And that's what, that's God's DNA that he lose to judge and to look and to say this one is mine. Because those who are working with the Holy Spirit, they were working with him when they cast out devils. They were working with him when they prophesied. They were working with him when they did miracles in his name. They were working with him when they said, Lord. But he says, not all that said, Lord, Lord, will enter. And he says, some will say, have we cast out devils in your name? Have we prophesied in your name? Have we done miracles in your name? Those were done with him. They could not do it without him. But he was not in them. And it's the in them that bears witness that you're a child of God. Hallelujah. 
there are a lot of people that was with Jesus that was not in Christ <laughs> not everybody who gathered was part of the church <sighs> come on somebody not everybody in the gathering is part of the body hello and so you got to understand if the spirit is not in you and that's what Paul keeps on hammering in Romans chapter 8 that that spirit of life in Christ that law of the spirit of life in Christ must be operating in you there is therefore now no condemnation he says to them that are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit for the law of the spirit of life in Christ has set me free from the law of sin and death come on if you don't believe the truth how will you be set free come on God is not sending any false prophets to lead you in the truth they are called false prophets for a reason because the Lord did not send them God did not send any false prophets he did not send any false apostles he did not send any false teachers and false preachers come on he did not send any false evangelists the devil has conjured up some people that's for his use to distort the truth and to bring people into error you got to make sure come on make your election sure because the Lord said by their fruit not so you know them so you can't say we see they live one way with true but in teach some good things because if you ain't living it you ain't true come on because those who are true aren't just talking it they are living it a true witness is not just talk hallelujah because they will tell you even in the court if the person's character is not up to par they won't listen to what you say in the courtroom you know you stay there that's why when the, the, the prosecution come up and test in the witness they will start to check their character you know and call things from the past and call things that have shown up in other records to say this disqualifies this person from being a true witness in this courtroom because if you can be discredited then your testimony has no weight in the courtroom. To so say, if you ain't living the life, then what give you the position to step up to the witness stand and start to declare the word to the people? You're only setting up the people for a fall. Because as soon as you fall, they fall too. Because you're setting the standard in the house. Come on. The jury is sitting down to hear the witness. And the jury is either drawn to the truth by the witness or pushed further away. Did you hear that? So that's why it says we got to know the truth. It's not just believe the truth. Come on. That's talking of an intimate connection and knowledge. Joseph was married to Mary but the word of God says and after Mary had the child Jesus then Joseph knew his wife then Joseph knew his wife she was already his wife but he didn't know her until after she had the child Christ Jesus so that no he's talking about know the truth is not just a mental belief to something heard it is a practical knowledge that's going to play out in your life 
that word is not just for information it's for transformation and it says it's going to produce fruit in your life come on somebody and when that started producing others will see it and say yes there goes a true child of God come on now many will never say that for you because all when they see they will still tear down by what they say because they are not pleased to see the changes taking place in you that is not in them so out of envy they will speak worse of you come on but the word of God said because of your behavior because of your consistency and faithfulness to the Lord you will shut the mouth of scoffers and those who speak in evil of you will be put to shame because of your good behavior not you so your behavior must put to silence the naysayers but if your behavior confirming what they say and then you're talking about nobody never judge me and nobody not perfect all of you have seen for all of you are sinner and then we're not righteous those kind of talk is not bringing any credibility to your testimony for you to say you're a true witness and that's what we want to get rid of you want it to be true witnesses of Christ then you must have a true testimony and if you have a true testimony you must have a true relationship with him and if you have a true relationship you must be grounded in the truth the whole truth and not more the truth many have gone off into heresies because they are still meddling in sin they are picking up spirits and impressions and thoughts and feelings of spirits that transmitting ideas and thoughts to them that they are now unable to distinguish what is from God and what is from the devil and that is why their, their, their message is not consistent with truth because their life is not consistent with truth come on but when your life is consistent with truth you, you don't have to worry about lies <laughs> you get it because truth will always be truth and if it's truth that is leading you truth will always lead you into more truth ah oh, Jesus truth will never lead you into lie come on and truth don't lead you into sin it leads you into righteousness come on somebody so you knowing the character and the nature of truth must be able to judge what is of God and what is not and I say to those preachers that meddling in sin your, 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 your statement your witness is being compromised because of your, your double standard and your people are going to be injured because of your double mindedness and your ministry is going to be destroyed because of your double ways you must be consistent in truth to be a, a true witness of truth but you can't be in and out dabbling in sin but hoping to stay faithful to the message you are part of that message you preach a man praise God you are part of that message and you are the declaration of that truth and you can't separate it from yourself because God didn't send the message by itself it sent the message with the messenger and they got to receive both to know truth come on because if they drift from the messenger they also drift from the message and if they drift from the message they also drift from the messenger God sent you and anoint you as one package Jesus said if they abide in my word but is not separate from his word he and his word are one you have to be faithful to the word 
to bring people into the faithfulness of the word you can't be plain with the word only when it's convenient to you and only when it looks good to others come on now you got to be faithful to the word through and true love truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth and he says then truth will make you free come on now come on now and he says who the son set free huh is free indeed he says the son abides in the house forever but slaves do not abide so you might be there now preaching and preaching those things to the people and you know that it's not right but because of the denomination for which you are working for you are treating it as just a career option to give to the people just basics of what they allow you to teach because the others may compromise what else they teach but you have a personal responsibility to declare to the congregation entrusted to you the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth and every variation from that is a testimony against you and an open door to the flock to be destroyed because Paul said to Timothy that he must study and abide in the word that he also will save himself and those who hear him that he will save both himself and those who hear him. You need to get back to the truth. And if you are not allowed to speak the truth, the whole truth, and not more the truth, there you need to leave there and preach somewhere you can speak the truth, the whole truth, and not about the truth. But you need to stop compromising the truth to suit those. Hallelujah. To please men rather than to please God we're calling you back get the thing in order because if we are all ministers of Christ we must bear that spirit of truth and declare the gospel of truth and stand submitted to the God of truth so Jesus says none come to me except the spirit draws them and he says, none comes unto the Father except by me. Look at that. The spirit of truth draws you to truth, which is the word, Jesus Christ. And Jesus says, none can come to the God of truth except by truth. And many are locked out today. Confused, perplexed, distorted, troubled, weary in their mind. Because the enemy have hung them out to dry. Because persons who are there more trying to please people than to please God. More trying to line their pockets than to save souls. More trying to make friends than to make true disciples of Jesus Christ. This is not what we are called to do man. We are called to be true ambassadors of Christ. And I encourage you my brothers and fellow laborers in the kingdom of God. Be careful. Be very mindful of the work that God has called you to do and be faithful to it. Don't compromise the message for people's feelings and to please people's demands. Remember why the Lord chose you and remember it was his choice be faithful be obedient be humble and willing and God will bring you into new levels of revelation that will impact both your life and the lives of the people that are entrusted to you praise God and I'm praying for you to rise up I was amongst them and I said, I'm not staying there. I'm not staying anywhere. I'm not free to declare the truth without fear and favor. Without partiality and hypocrisy. Come on. You got to know the truth. And the truth will make you free. And many of you know, but you are afraid to say it. Hmm. 
they are afraid for the board meeting and the the, 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 the inquisition my God and all the interrogation but you got to stand up like Paul and face that counsel and God will put word in your mouth to answer them but you need to stop playing a hypocrite while people's souls are being damaged people's faith are being corrupted by things that you're your 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 oh Jesus you're compromising with that is causing the people to lose their footing in this war against the devil the world and sin you want them to know the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth come on give God a praise in here We are out of time, but we are not out of word. We got to call you into a place of worship. Come on, stand with me. We are going to worship God in here. I hope that the word of God really sunk in your spirit. Come on, somebody. Lift those hands to the Lord. Get some worship in here. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on, lift those hands to Jesus. Whatever it takes. Hallelujah. That's what we must be willing to do. Whatever it takes to get closer to you, Lord, that's what I'll be willing to do. I'll trade sunshine for rain. That's what I'll be willing to do. And whatever it takes to get closer to you, Lord. That's what I'll be willing to do. I'll trade sunshine. started out in the Lord don't let anyone corrupt your faith towards the Lord to go all the way with him no compromise in the truth because only the truth can set you free it's either it's true or it's not true
belongs to him. Come on. Open up your heart to him. Recommit your life afresh to him right now. Let him have his way. Whatever it takes for him to be glorified in you. Ah, you said it to the Lord many times. Yeah. That you would go with him all the way. Yeah. Whatever the cost. Come on now. Surrender all to Jesus. Shatter it be. Yes, Lord. Shatter in me in your presence. I want to have more. I want to have more. Yes, Lord. Shatter in me. Anybody want to have more? I want to have more. salvation with fear and with trembling. Live and walk in holiness. In all your conduct and all your conversation. When the Lord come on that day, you will not be ashamed. You will not be in terror. But the peace of God passes all understanding will furnish your heart and be joyous unspeakable and full of glory come on praise him in the house right where you are right now just open your mouth and start to talk to God this is the house of prayer Ah, open your mouth and talk to him. Ah, oh, Jesus. Renew your vows. Hallelujah. Be rightly positioned with him. Let him lead you into all truth. make you free as who the sun set free is free indeed hallelujah Jesus said I have water to give you if you drink this water you'll never thirst again to be in your belly 
flowing out as rivers of living waters springing up into eternal life oh hallelujah hallelujah thank you lord hallelujah yes lord fresh anointed fresh oil upon their heads now lord deeper revelation and unfolding of the mysteries of the kingdom in their innermost being grant them the grace to understand it to bear fruit unto your God and fruit that remain they call us to the kingdom for a time like this to overthrow the works of darkness to call men out of darkness into your marvelous light us, Lord, as a shepherd lead his flock, lead us in the path of righteousness, for your name's sake, hallelujah, yes, Lord, break every chain, every hindrance, hindering spirits, kept them slave to certain practices and cycles in their life liberate them now Lord yeah. they will die to the flesh live to the spirit hallelujah and bring that living waters to others who are thirsty that are dying of thirst in this world that are being intoxicated on the wine of sin and immorality let your blood now flow through their veins let your blood now wash them Lord sanctify them through and through let the life of Christ be evident in them that Christ came and manifested in the flesh you can manifest in their flesh not as temporary but as permanent residence in your spirit hallelujah come on somebody worship him come on somebody worship him come on somebody worship him let praises rise on the inside yep. hallelujah Ah, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Shift what need to shift. Break what need to break. Block up what need to block. Scatter what need to scatter. Kill what need to kill. Say what need to say. You are God. Worthy of the praise and the glory. Worthy of the honor and the praise. And we bless your name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Turn it around. Turn it around. My God. Hallelujah. higher place oh deeper deeper 
name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Higher, higher. The school of wisdom. Yes, Lord. We go from faith to faith. From strength to strength. From grace to grace. From glory to glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, lift those hands and tell him thanks. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on. It's a refreshing for you in the house. Those who've been walking with the Lord, I need a refreshing in His presence. Hallelujah! He promised that times of refreshing would come. Hallelujah! And right now He wants to refresh. He says, "They that wait upon the Lord." He will renew their strength. Lift those hands to Jesus.
Ramasia. In the Mosha. And that's the Hallelujah. 
without you. My God. Oh God, oh God. You are everything. I have everything in you. Thank you, Lord. Nothing broken, nothing missing. and the glory in one more time. Praise God. Hallelujah. I don't know what it would I enjoy the presence of God every day. Hallelujah. And it's great to be in the body of Christ and great to be with the saints as we worship the Lord together. We know that power is being released into the atmosphere. Praise God. And he clothed us with power for us to gain more victory. Will you say? Amen. Hallelujah. It's the anointing of Christ. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's the anointing of Christ that destroys every yoke and lifts every burden. It's the anointing of Christ that destroys every yoke and lifts every burden. Okay. Praise God. So... <laughs> So he encourages you to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Praise God. As we walk by faith and not by sight, I believe you're going to see more and more of the glory and the power and the presence of God in your life. Don't underestimate what God can do for you, through you and in you. And he wanted to raise your level to another faith and to another your faith to another level and believe that the, the possibilities are endless in Christ. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And God wants to bring you into that divine overflow. Are you ready for that? Praise God. And you have to set your heart and mind upon him. Hallelujah. Word of God says, set your affections on him. And if you be delight yourself in him and in what he plans for you, believe me, he will not keep you in the dark. He didn't come to get keep you in the dark anyway. He came to bring you into the light. He has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Come on, somebody. And light reveals stuff. Light doesn't hide stuff. Hallelujah. And so light will reveal some stuff in your life that you weren't seeing. And reveal some stuff that needs healing and correction and and bringing into alignment with God's plans and purpose for your life. And we wanted to run with the word. Don't just sit back and, and hope say it happened, but move out in obedience. Connect with God, connect with his servants, and be obedient to the word of God and watch the word of God transform your life. Hallelujah, from inside out. Praise God. That's how the kingdom of God operates. Praise God. Very small, but grows. It's very large. 
Hallelujah. Humongous as they would say. Hallelujah. So God wants you to grow in your faith. Grow in your relationship with Him. Grow in your knowledge of Him. Praise God. And all these things are tools He is putting in place to prepare you for that glorious finish. For that glorious appearing of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. And so we want you to stay in the Word. Abide in the Word. Meditate on the Word. And so shall you make your way prosperous and have good success. Praise God. It's for you and for your children and your children's children and as many as will come. Hallelujah. Whether they are near or far. Hallelujah. The Lord is declaring the word of power. The word of the gospel to you is that his kingdom is here and his, all things he has put in place in his governance to make your life into the life he has ordained before the foundation of the earth. And you cannot have it without him. You cannot have it on your own way. You got to go his way. Know his ways and, and his thoughts and his word. And connect with him on deeper levels to see his manifestation in your life. What you say? I'm here for you. And I'm believing that it will be well for you as you walk by faith and believe the word. And activate the word through your obedience. Amen. Praise God. You've been blessed today. Praise God. I want to release you. Hallelujah. Lift those hands to the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Those who are watching, want to lift your hands to in the household. Let the presence of God take charge over your house, over your family, over your business. We release anointing apostolic authority and grace over your life right now. In the name of Jesus, we rebuke principalities and powers, spiritual weakness in high places, rulers of darkness, demons, demons, shaman, every spell and enchantment and, and all kind of divination. We bind and shut down and render ineffective right now in the name of Jesus. We pray that the angels of God will be dispatched from the north, the south, the east and the west to be as a wall of fire around you in your going out and in your coming over you and your household and your children and your children's children. Hallelujah. Grace and favor in the name of Jesus. Through Christ all the nations of the earth shall be blessed and in Christ you have all spiritual blessing, all spiritual inheritance and release to you and power and authority and grace and favor is released to you right now. In the name of Jesus, we pray that every obstruction, every distraction, every delusion will be shot back into the outer darkness right now. In the name of Jesus, that the Lord's angels will bind every demonic spirits that have become a hindrance and created all kind of havoc in your life. We reduce their work to ashes now, to dust on their feet. Let fire come from heaven and devour all the works of Satan and that grace and favor will manifest more and more and more in your life, even in hostile environment, even amidst the adversities and all the obstructions and things that the enemy send that you will rise to new heights of, of providence and, and greatness in Jesus name, come on give him the praise right now, in Jesus name and we speak healing in your body, we speak Speak healing in your bones, in your flesh. We speak healing over your digestive system, your immune system, your reproductive system, your circulation system, your musculoskeletal system, your nervous system to be healed in the name of Jesus. Your respiratory system to be clear from every blockages in the name of Jesus and obstructions. In the name of Jesus, we plead the blood of Jesus Christ over your life right now. And we speak healing is your portion and deliverance and praise over you in the name of Jesus and we thank you Lord that you have already assigned and declared it right now and we agree and declare it is so in Jesus name come on give him the praise right now come on give him the praise give him the praise give him the praise Give him the press. Give 
Give him the press. Give him the press. Give him the press. Give him the press. Glory to God. And it is well in Jesus' name. Believe and activate your faith and see it manifest in your life. Because that's what the Lord has declared for you. And it shall be so in Jesus' name. Praise God. Go ahead and show us the Lord is laid upon your heart. Those who are watching, you're watching Increase in Faith I, and uh, in, Increase in Faith Deliverance Ministry International. Our website is Increase in Faith INTL.org. Hallelujah. You can check us out and see more about our ministry on our website, Increase in Faith INTL.org. And you can look on the, about us and see more about our ministry, our mission statement, and hallelujah, prophetic word over this ministry, hallelujah, and what God has assigned for us to do different projects that we aim to accomplish, and whatever God has laid upon your heart to connect us with, connect with us to do, we are, of course, ready and willing to run with you to have them done. In Jesus' name, write your prayer request in the comment box, and we connect with you to see more things manifest in your life. Together, we can accomplish more than a part and we also ask you to write your praise report also of how the ministry has been blessing you that we, we rejoice to hear of what the mighty things God have been doing in your life and in that we move by faith and obedience leading of the Holy Spirit that great things will happen in you through you and around you as you connect with the Christ the King and the kingdom great grace to be released to you in Jesus name amen Praise God. And those who have not accepted the Lord as your personal Lord and Savior, you need to do so now. Don't put it off for another date. Make your election sure. Get yourself in line with the King and life in order with Him in Jesus' name and believe that God is working it together for your good in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. So we encourage you in the Lord to have your life in order and structure with him and know that he has a plan and a purpose for you. Commit your life to him. Ask him to forgive you of all your sins and invite him to make his dwelling in you through his Holy Spirit that you can be led by him from glory to glory, from faith to faith and from strength to strength in the knowledge of Christ, your Lord and Savior. Amen. Praise God. So I wanted to continue the walk. If you want to see more of our broadcast, you can look for us on YouTube. Look for Richard Fagan and subscribe and we'll be connecting you to all the recordings that are there. And you can also send a friend's request to Richard Fagan on Facebook and see the live broadcast. We're here to ensure you're abreast with what the word God is depositing in this house and that you'll be properly fed in the Lord. I'm Apostle Richard Fagan here declaring the gospel of Christ and his kingdom. We are 3 East Street, Montego Bay, Jamaica. And we hope to bring you more and more word to build up your faith in the Lord and to help you in your walk with Christ. I believe that God has much more in store for you as you keep on keeping on in the Lord. We believe you're going to see more and more manifest in your life and in the lives of those around you that are being impacted by the light that is shining through your life. Because the Lord said it, let your light shine before men that they will see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven and you believe in that that will shine and it will impact the lives around you and the name of the lord will be glorified amen praise god are you blessed today yes, i was truly blessed and i'm glad to have you here i'm glad to have all you will join us online and we thank you for watching and for really being with us through this time. We expect that great change will manifest for you in this year and in, even in the years to come as we continue. As a, we're looking forward to the glorious appearing of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That we will be ready for such a great appearance and we'll be not found wanting. Because God is working together all things for our good. Praise God. Hallelujah. Lift those hands to the Lord. Let me bless and release you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord have up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. God bless you real good. Have a great week. Love you all. And the Lord. Praise God.